Get full messages on Pastor OT YouTube channel. Search for Pastor OT on YouTube, subscribe and click on the notification bell to be alerted every time there is a new upload or a live service. Subscribe to Pastor OT Audio Podcast and 5 Minutes with Pastor OT on Google Podcast or Podcast Addict on Android and on Podcast on iOS. Your life will never be the same. Get full messages on Pastor OT YouTube channel. Search for Pastor OT on YouTube, subscribe and click on the notification bell to be alerted every time there is a new upload or a live service. Subscribe to Pastor OT Audio Podcast and 5 Minutes with Pastor OT on Google Podcast or Podcast Addict on Android and on Podcast on iOS. Your life will never be the same. What is the purpose of God? Really, what was his plan for all this? But we see Jesus, 
who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He died so you could live with him as your best friend forever. Understanding this changes everything. It's something worth celebrating. See, we are the friends of God. Sunday morning, Hey, Full messages on Pastor Oti YouTube channel. Search for Pastor Oti on YouTube, subscribe and click on the notification bell to be alerted every time there is a new upload or a live service. Subscribe to Pastor Oti Audio Podcast and 5 Minutes with Pastor Oti on Google Podcast or Podcast Addict on Android and on Podcast on iOS. Your life will never be the same. Messages on Pastor Oti YouTube channel. 
Search for Pastor Oti on YouTube, subscribe and click on the notification bell to be alerted every time there is a new upload or a live service. Subscribe to Pastor Oti Audio Podcast and 5 Minutes with Pastor Oti on Google Podcast or Podcast Addict on Android and on Podcast on iOS. Your life will never be the same. Praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome to today's service. Hallelujah. I want us to open our Bibles to Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Last week Sunday we started learning about what we should do concerning the first coming. What we should do with the first coming. Hallelujah. And I remember pastor talking about the fatherhood of God. Hallelujah. Now Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible says for as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Wherever you are, say, I'm a son of God, because I'm led by the Spirit of God. Verse 15, please. So verse 15 says that, For ye, for ye have not received the spirit, of, uh, the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The real, um, the 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 new King James makes us understand that the the spirit is not an it; it's a, it's, it's a person. So verse 16 should read: "The spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God." Hallelujah! See, I'm a child of God. Hallelujah! Now, with this consciousness, now the Bible from here we understand that because we have the Holy Spirit in us, this is a sign and a proof. That we are children of God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want you to begin to speak in the language of the Spirit, stirring up yourself, building up this consciousness, preparing your heart and your mind for today's word. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands, lift up your right hand, and Praying the language of the Spirit, having this consciousness that by the agency of the Holy Spirit in us, we are children of God. Hallelujah. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Libro ho dalla ba cora mando sata le pro hondo la ba ha dile mondo santa la ba as you are speaking in the language of the spirit you are preparing your mind and you are preparing your heart for the word of god in the name of the lord jesus mando la braha do ramando so celebre whatever god has installed for you this service in the name of the lord jesus you are preparing your heart to receive the word you are preparing your heart to receive the word in the name of the lord jesus le mo ramando so celebre he delebe Rakatola manda la bakora mando sata le braha dose telebre de lele le bora mando sata le ke telebre de lebere be romondo 
The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Mando sete le brehe delebe, le copara mando satalaba, le paramando sete le be, le copara manda la bacara, le paramando sete le be. As you speak in the language of the spirit, you are stirring up this consciousness, you are building up this consciousness, and you are becoming awakened more and more to the to the fatherhood of God concerning your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Le manda sete le bre de le poranda, rakatola manda sete le be. Re ma 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 so tele pre he de le be Ra ma 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 E le po ra ma ndo se te le be E re ka ta la ba ra ma nda la ba E ra ma ndo se te le pre he de le be E ra ma 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 E ro do se te le ka ba ra ma ndo se te le be E ra ma ndo se te le pre Re ko to la ma nda la ba ha da la E ra ma ndo lo bo de I ra ma nda sa la ba na ma nda E ro mo ndo se te le pre E ka ta Tala manda la ba, e ramanda la ba, ko ramanda, e roto se tela mende, le ne mende, le ne mende. Onda balama, e romondo sopre he de lebe, re patala mando saira, e prando soto le mende, e prando sanda lido para manda, e lama cora manda sanda labanada, e ramando soto le brende lebe, e ramando rabahada laba, e ramando soto le brehe de bebe. The Bible says that behold what manner of love has the Father bestowed unto us, that we should be called the sons of God. Le catala manda laba, e ramando. Kobe rendo sala manda, era mando koranda celebre, era tola manda la bahadola, era mando sote, le katala mando la bow, re katala bahada balaba. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want you to say this words with me in the name of our Lord Jesus. Say, I'm a child of God and a joint heir with Christ. Therefore, I rule and reign in the name of our Lord Jesus. Say by the agency of the Holy Spirit, I have the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Say I am bold and I'm confident as a child of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say I'm a, I'm a born child of God. I'm a born child of God. I have the Holy Spirit in me and I'm full of boldness and I'm full of love and I'm full of power. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say fear has no power over me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say my mind is sound by the power of the Holy Spirit. Say I'm a joint heir with Christ and I rule and reign in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say I'm shining and I'm shining and I'm reigning within Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just continue speaking in the language of the Spirit. Limo ramando satala balaba, rekatala balaba balaba. Thinking about this word, lepo ramando satala ba, repala manda laba. I'm a child of God and I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir with Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that is who I am. Malo satala balaba, lekoto la balaba balaba. I'm a love child of a love God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, leparamando sete, and I'm confident in His love. I'm confident in His love, and I'm shining in His love, and I'm walking in His love, and I'm flying in His love. In the name of the Lord Jesus, le tele paramando sete, le paramanda sata, la cobra mando sete, le paramanda lava, le poramanda sete, il le paramando co paramanda, e la paramando sete, oh la mando la pere mende le be, e la mando sata la balava, e kala mando sete le be, re para Mama, 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 eh, Ramando se telebere, eh, la cata la mando so tolebe, eh, papa, 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 oh, God is my father, oh, God is my father, the king of kings is my father, and he calls me his own, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that is who I am, that is who I am, in the name of the Lord Jesus, manto se telebe, repa la mando se te, a ramanda la paraba, eh, ramando so tolebe, all things are working together for my good because I'm a child of God. Because I'm a child of God. 
Le paramanda laba, rapato sete, le paramando laba laba, arabalo sete, le paramanda laba, alaba shote le belebe, manta laba laba laba, le kota laba laba. Oh, begin to see yourself walking in this victory. Begin to see yourself moving in this victory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. time to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are and begin to magnify the name of the living God. Thank you, Father. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Give him all the worship. He deserves it. Lift your voice and magnify his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Lift your voice. Worship his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God of heaven and the Sing Cabiosi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. You that I see. Thank you, Jesus. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all. Center of the it you that I see, it's you that I see, oh, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, oh, at the center of it all, at the center of it all, oh, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, oh, it's you that I see.
there is power in your name. Mendele boche te be de be de be de be de be de. Kora ba 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 ba. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. Kora ba ni yanda mendele boche te be de be de be de be de. Kora ba 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 ba. You are big, bigger than the biggest. You are strong. Stronger than the strongest, you are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the beast. You are strong, you are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are great, you are great. His name is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you for peace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow, you're welcome to Wednesday, Wednesday night service. I know you're enjoying yourself already. Hallelujah. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Say to yourself, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. The life of God is at work within me. The goodness of God is what I enjoy. Every single day of my life. I've made up my mind to live that good life that God has prearranged for me. Hallelujah. You know, on Sunday we learned so many things concerning what to do with the first coming. I showed you Christ's um, first, the incarnation of Christ, the very first incarnation of Christ. Rather, the incarnation of Christ, not the first incarnation of Christ. Hallelujah. And all the things, beautiful things that he came to do. I mentioned how that he came to take away sin, the Son of Man. And he came to um, give life, the life of God to humanity. He came to make children of God, make us children of God. Therefore, we have rights. God has become our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the knowledge of, of your word. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who is with us and in us. Thank you for inspiration from your Holy Spirit to have understanding in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you that your word proceeds with power. Thank you for the ministry of your word, the ministry of your spirit that are functioning right now. Thank you. For great grace that is ministered to all of us, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you must awaken to the fatherhood of God. Because of all that Jesus came to do, you must awaken to the fatherhood of God. That means awaken to your rights as a son or a child of God, as a son or a daughter of God. You must awaken to that particular um, fact of God's word. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read from verse 6. Ephesians 2 from verse 6. His, and has raised us up together. Let's read from verse 4. Probably to make more sense. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. But God, say but God. But God, who is rich in mercy. God is rich in a currency called mercy. Then he says, for his great love, his great love. I was telling you on Sunday that God loves you. Into details, I tell you. He doesn't joke with you at all. He cares for you affectionately and cares for you watchfully. You must awaken to that reality. 
Stop thinking that God does not like you. Stop thinking that God hates you. Stop thinking that God is looking for you to break your neck. Stop thinking, stop thinking of, about, about, about unnecessary things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read your Bible and you see what God thinks about you and how God feels about you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This one says, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, or has made us alive together with Christ. Then it says, by grace are you saved. Next verse. And has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So as far as God is concerned, we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is our spiritual position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's, what, that's where you are right now. The Bible says that for our citizenship is in heaven. Our, our, our presence, our being, where we live is heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then it says, from whence also we look for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who changed this our body. You know, that's Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Look at it, Philippians 3, 20. Oh, it says, for our conversation is in heaven. Let's read the Amplified. So I see what the word conversation means. It says, but we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. He didn't say we are going to be. He says we are, we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. And from it, from heaven also, we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Savior. Wow. Then he goes on and on and on and on. Do you see? So this is our present state. Wow. By virtue of the fact that we are children of God, we were born by God into heaven. You know, the word born again means to be born from above. You know, from two Greek words, ganao and And it means to be born from above or to be born from heaven. Our very origin is heavenly. We are heavenly people. We have a heavenly calling. We have a heavenly assignment. We have a heavenly uh, inheritance. Everything about us is heavenly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, we are not ordinary. Tell yourself, I'm not ordinary. I'm not ordinary. But what you need to do is to start thinking the way God wants you to think. Start thinking the way God, start thinking the way God has said to think in his word. You see, go back to Ephesians chapter, chapter 2 where we're reading. I have so many things to share with you. This, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7. Then it says that in the ages to come, he saved us for this purpose, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Wow. wow. God wants to show his kindness, the kindness that he has towards you to, all, to everybody. He wants you to be a trophy. I showed you this the last time. He's going to use us as trophies of his grace, trophies of his kindness. Wow. Next verse, verse 8. Then it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Verse 9. Then it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk, on, walk in them. Let's read the Amplified of verse 10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. We are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew or born again, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So it is your responsibility to live that good life that he prearranged for you to live. That was what I was telling the last time on Sunday, that I'll never be broke in my life. I will, I've decided that I will never be broke in my life. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be, to, to be in infirmity, to have any form of infirmity in my body, in my mind, in any part of my system. I lived a good life. No depression. No anxiety. No challenges. No matter what is happening around me. Makes no difference. 
God's word is true. He says, let God be true and all men be liars. Makes no, what, makes, makes no difference what you are seeing around you. What God's word says is higher than what your environment is telling you. And as a child of God, you must insist on it. You must insist on it. You must, you must make sure that your world conforms to the word of God in your life. Let your experiences fall in line with the word of God. Don't let the word of God rather fall in line with your experiences. Let your experiences fall in line with the word of God. Change your environment. Change your, your atmosphere. Change the way you think. Change the way you do your things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he has prearranged a good life for you to live. Not a sad life. Not a small life. He says, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. Have it to the full. He says, they should have and enjoy life. Brother, I don't know why you, you, you decide and choose rather to go down instead of going higher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read, let's read that portion again. Ephesians 2, 10, amplified. It's nice. It says, for we are his workmanship. We are his own, for we are his own handiwork or workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born and we are born again for this purpose. That we may do those good works which God predestined. Planned beforehand for us. Taking paths which he prearranged ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Living the good life. Which he prearranged and made ready for us. He's prearranged and made ready a good life for you. Don't live anything less than that good life. You know, you can have a lot of inheritance and choose not to. If you are ignorant about it, you will not enjoy anything. Because, just all because you are ignorant. That's why I ended on, on Sunday by telling you that all these good things come as a result of your knowledge, acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ. They are good things in you. There are many beautiful things that are in you in Christ Jesus. All that God will ever give to you, he's put inside your spirit. Now your job is to bring it out by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the agency of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. So awaken to the fatherhood of God. That's the first thing to do with the first coming of Christ. Awaken to the fatherhood of God, which means awaken to your rights as a, as a child of God. Awaken to who, who you are in Christ. And who Christ is in you. And waking to that fact. Stop uh, uh, living a natural life. A normal life. The natural human life. Because you are not natural. You are not, hum you are not human as far as God is concerned. You are super normal. You are superhuman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The super, superhuman power inside you. I tell you, brother, we are not ordinary. Look at Colossians 1.29. Colossians 1.29. Paul says, Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Let's read the Amplified so you understand it some more. It says, For this I labor unto weariness, striving with all the superhuman energy, which he so mightily enkindles and works within me. Have you seen it? The superhuman energy, which is at work in your spirit. Superhuman energy, which is at work in your spirit. The, the, the power of God, the power that God used to create the heavens and the earth is all inside you. So Paul prays that you may come to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power which is at work in you and for you. There's so much power working inside. If you look around and you look at your family and you look at, you, you forget that there's something inside you. The problem with Christians is forgetfulness. Yes, we don't remember what manner of men we are. That's the challenge. So in James chapter 1, look at James chapter 1 from verse 21. It is wherefore lay apart all filthiness, lay, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive meekness and grafted word, which is able to save your souls. Verse 22. Then it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man, if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or in a mirror. It says, The one who hears the word and does not do it is like someone who looks at his natural face. In a mirror, at his face, in a mirror. Do you see? Next verse, verse 24. Then it says, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgeteth what man of man he was. Straight away, immediately, what straight away is immediately. Immediately he forgets what man of man he was. We are a different manner of man. 
we are not the same as those who do not have the life of God in them. We are different. There are three groups on earth as far as God is concerned. There's a Jew, there's a Gentile, and then there's a new creature. There's his children. Do you see? We are the new creature, the children of God. We are different from the Jew. We are different from the Gentile. We are different. We're on a different platform altogether. Never forget. When you read it, never forget. Don't forget. Make sure you don't forget. That's what it means by, we mean when we, when we say insist on your rights. Make sure you don't forget what manner of man you are. You see, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetting what manner of man he was. Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, he's talking about the word, and continueth therein. Have you seen it? He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So if you want to be blessed in every single thing that you do, he says, don't forget what manner of man you are. Paul said, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2. Then he says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Meaning that he was expecting them not to walk as men, not to walk as normal people. We are not normal. We are not like every other person. We are different. Why? Because we are children of God. We are children of God. The life of God is resident in our spirit. And that makes us supernatural. That makes us super, super normal. That gives us an advantage in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What makes God God is what is inside you now. That is why you must find out what has happened to you. Awaken to the fatherhood of God. Awaken to your rights in Christ. Awaken to who Christ is in you. Awaken to the power of God that is resident in your spirit. Awaken to righteousness. Awaken to the, the holiness God, that God has put into, inside your spirit. Hallelujah. And walk the way he's designed for you to walk. Praise the Lord. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. We are just like Jesus. Everything about us is just like Jesus. You know, Jesus was the word of God, tabernacled in flesh. So in John 1, 14, the Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. You know, the word that became flesh that dwelt amongst us was Jesus Christ. Jesus was the word of God, tabernacled in flesh, walking around. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, our new birth is also described along a similar line. It says that being born again, not of corruptible seed. Okay? We are now born again, not of corruptible seed. In other words, what happened to you during your natural birth is different from what happens to you during your spiritual birth. They are not the same. It says the seed that comes from a man, from a human being, is corruptible. It is subject to destruction. It is subject to decay. You see, jump to verse 24. First Peter 1, 24. It says, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass with the red, and the flower with the red. The flower that falleth away. This is the glory of man. Next verse, verse 25. Then it says, But the word of the Lord that dwelleth forever. And this is the word which, by which, uh, which by the gospel is preached unto you. Then he's, so in verse 23, he was trying to let you know that you are, not, you, are not, you are not a different kind of person altogether. You are a different breed. You are not from the natural seed. So it's being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We are born of God's word. We are the word of God tabernacled in flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have become the word of God tabernacled in flesh. That's what has happened to you. You see, maybe it's not sounding so right in your ears. It's because you've not yet gotten to know it. There are different levels of knowledge. There are different levels. Different levels. And God's desire is for you to come to a place where the no what you know, okay, you are united with what you know. And hence produce results with what you know. Where well, you don't forget what you've read in the Bible. What you've read in the Bible is your reality. This is a problem with many, many Christians. Some Christians say, oh, these things are not true. They are just telling us stories. It's because they never spend time to allow themselves to move from one level of knowledge to another. With respect to what God has said. What I'm saying are things you need to meditate on over and over and over and over and over again. The secret is in the meditation. Yeah. The more you meditate, the more first second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Look at Second Corinthians 3, 18. Just, let me just use that to explain to you. Just but we are with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. 
But we all with open face, beholding as in the glass. The word glass is the mirror. Remember, in the other place, it describes the word of God as the mirror, isn't it? It's the one who, uh, the one who hears the word and forgets it. And it's not a doer of it. It's like a man who looks into his, nat- into his natural face in a mirror or in a glass. Do you see? The word of God is that mirror. It's that glass. So in this particular place, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, he's showing you that he says, we all, we all children of God, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. When you look into a mirror, what do you see? You see yourself, right? Yeah. If you see your grandmother, there's a problem. <laughs> if you see your uncle, there's a problem. There's something going on. You see, when you look into a mirror, you see yourself. He says, but we are with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Meaning that he describes you as the glory of the Lord. We are the glory of God, tabernacled in flesh, here on earth now. We are representatives of God here on earth now. If someone wants to see Jesus, he must look at you and I. That is why they called them Christians first at Antioch. Because they didn't look different from Jesus. So they said, they called them just like Christ. These guys are just like Christ. That's, what, that's what, 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 what the word Christian means. It means just like Christ. They couldn't tell a difference. Because when they saw that, they saw that they were, like, they were just like Jesus. In their talk, in their walk, in their character, in their behavior, in everything, they were just like Jesus. They looked extremely like him. So they said, these people are like Christ. It says, but we are with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. I change the word change there is metamorphosis. That's a Greek word. It means to transform from one level to another. It means to change from one level to another or to be transfigured. Just like you have for butterflies. To change from one level of glory to the other. But we are with open face beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Into the same image. Meaning, you see, you have a, because when you look into the mirror, you see yourself. That is the glory of God. Do you see? But then he says that the more you look, the longer you behold, the longer you keep looking at it, the more you are changed to look more like what you are seeing. In other words, your experience becomes what is in the word. It's not just some written, some things that are written in the Bible. It becomes your experience. The more you behold it, and what does it mean to behold? The more you meditate on it. The more you look at it. The more you think about it. The more, you see, Christianity is not something by the side. No, it's an active thing. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. Look at Ephesians 1, 22. Let's read the message version. You see what I'm talking about. He says, he's in charge of, all, of it all. Has the final word on everything. Then he says, at the, end, at the center of all this, Christ rules the church. Verse 23. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he fills everything with his presence. He says that the world... The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. A lot of people have treated the church as a periphery to the world. It's like our, our, lives, uh, our lives are going on. The church is just one of those things. Church is not just one of those things. Christianity is not just one of those things. That is your life. We have one life lived in different aspects, different spheres of contact. You see, so you have the life of God and it's lived in school. You don't have school life and church life and family life and social life. Entertainment life, beloved life, marriage life. There's nothing like that. We have one life. It's called the life of God. And it's lived in marriage. It's lived at home. It's lived in different places. It's lived at schools. It's lived at work. When Christ who is our life shall, man, shall, man, shall show up, then we shall also manifest with him. Do you see? So we have one life. It's called the life of God. And it's lived in different places. Please, you understand. So this is active. It's an active thing. Don't treat this thing as one of those things. It's not one of those things. This is where your success is. Your success is in the word of God. Your success is in the life of God. Your success is in meditation on the word. It's so important. It's so important. You'll be surprised at what will happen to you. You will see the glory of God functioning in your life. Effectively, actively. It will not be something that, it will not be a story. For many, it's a story. It's not just a story. It's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he wants you to increase. He wants you to engage in the knowledge of God. Thank you. He wants you to engage in The more you engage in it, the more it becomes real for you. Mm-hmm. But people say things. Oh, these things are not true. These things. There are preachers who don't even believe what I'm talking about now. Yeah. That's why they never preach along these lines. You see, you go to church, you, just, you, don't, know, you don't even know what they are preaching. 
Instead of preaching what God says to teach in the way, what we are supposed to teach is so clearly written out in the scriptures. It's so clear. You don't, there are no, you know, mixing of words about it. There's, it's so clear. What is most important and what needs to be focused on is so clear. He says that in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But the new creature, he tells you so specifically, the new creature is what is most important. And as many, he says, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and upon the Israel of God. You see. So, brothers and sisters, let's, let's get our focus right. This is it. Awaken to the fatherhood of God and make sure you enjoy everything he has given. All the benefits. Make sure you enjoy all the benefits, all that he has brought to you in Christ. Hallelujah. So, we are just like him. We are just like him. He's the word. We are the word. He's the word tabernacled in flesh. We are the word tabernacled in flesh. Meaning that he says that being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Meaning that the word of God is not corruptible. Meaning that your life will not, it's not corruptible. You cannot be corrupted. You cannot be destroyed. You cannot be changed. You cannot be, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because of what you are born of, what you are made of. We have the genes of God. That's what has happened to us. Remember, he washed us with the washing of regeneration. Isn't it? We've been regened. We have the genes of God now. You can't, no matter how much you love me, if I should lose some of my fingers, you cannot give your fingers over to me for me to put them on mine. If we don't have the same DNA and don't have uh, uh, all these things that need to, be, need to happen, do you see? What's it called? Blood group and all of, all of those things. We should have similar blood group, same blood group, same DNA. Ge- our genetic coding should be the same. You cannot give me your heart, physical, physical heart, no matter how much you love me. If my heart gets, gets a problem and you want to help me, so you are giving me your heart, or your kidney. For instance, there are, there are kidney, people who are looking for kidneys right now because their kidneys are filled, one are failed. Or both are failed and they need one more. Do you see? You can't just get anybody's kidney. No matter how much they love you, they can't just give their kidneys to you. There are a lot of things that need to be checked medically speaking, scientifically speaking, biologically speaking. They have to check whether you are the same. You have the same DNA, same gene, same, same whatever. Whether you can match. Because if they give you another, if I love you and I give my kidney, your body rejects it. Because I, we, we may not have the same gene, genetic coding. In the same way, you cannot be made a member of the body of Christ unless you have the same genes as Christ. You cannot be made a member of the body of Christ unless you have the same genes. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, look at 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13. Then it says, For by one spirit are we are baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. If we didn't have his, his genes, we couldn't have been made a part of his body. Look at verse 27, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. It says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are members in particular. If you, are not, if you don't have his genes, you cannot be made a part of them. So if we are part of him, then you should know that we have his genes. Can you imagine? You have the genes of God inside you right now as you're sitting there. The genes of God, you see, there are are things that are are hereditary. There are sicknesses that are hereditary. There are characteristics that are hereditary. Did you know that? Yeah. Someone will say, you look like your grandfather. You are behaving like your grandfather. Yeah, genes. That's work. That's work inside. <laughs> and it's happening to you. Guess what? We carry the genes of God, not our grandfather any longer. You are not carrying the genes of your grandfather. You are now carrying the genes of God. Meaning that the character of God is what shows up in you. The goodness of God is what shows up in you. The excellence that God bears and have is yours now. Hallelujah. Meaning that you can live an excellent, glorious, beautiful life. It's all up to you. It's all of this. It's a decision you make. The day you are waking to the fatherhood of God, you make a decision that, listen, I'm changing. I'm going to be different. I'm going to take what God has said concerning me seriously. From henceforth, 
I'll live a different life. I'll live the life that God has predestined for me to live. He says he has, lived, he has given me a good life. He has taken paths to live the good life. I'm deciding from henceforth that I'm going to live that life. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to be put to shame. I'm not going to be poor. I'm not going to be uh, living like a pauper, living a, fa a, a failure's life. I'm a bundle of success happening everywhere. I'm a success and I'm happening everywhere. I succeed at everything I do in the name of the Lord Jesus. You make up your mind and you start journeying. You start journeying towards that side. Hallelujah. Do you like what I'm sharing with you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let me show you some more. Look at 1 John 4, 17. We are not ordinary. First John 4, 17. This hearing is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is right now, so are we in this world. So we are him in this world. We are him in this world. You are Christ in this world. We bear the same, the same name. Brother, we are not ordinary. So awaken, tell me about awaken to the fatherhood of God. Awaken to the reality of who you have been made. Do you see? Awaken to it. Stop sleeping. I'm not talking about literal sleep. Like, awaken. That's why that's because a lot of Christians are sleeping. A lot of Christians are lions who are asleep. And monkeys are just having a few days. Antelopes are just having a few days. Because the lion is sleeping. Rise up and start roaring. Between you and the devil, you are the actual lion. The, devil, the Bible says the devil, your adversary, goeth about as a roaring lion. He's not. But he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You are the roaring lion. We belong to the tribe eh, of the lions. We belong to that lion. Our, 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 our high priest our Lord is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And we follow him. As he is, so are we. We are lions here on earth. We are lions on earth. Start roaring wherever you are. Start roaring. Like, be, like come alive. That's why, that's why I said, awaken to the fatherhood of God. We've been sleeping for a long time. Awaken to that fact. Become bold. Become confident. Don't behave like you are nothing. Eh? That business is going to work. Okay? That business is going to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start talking to it. Start thinking differently about it. You see, it, it's, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. That is why in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may be able to prove the will of God for your life. Basically, that's what he's saying. By changing your mind, you're able to prove the good will of God for your life, the acceptable will of God for your life, and the perfect will of God for your life. You're able to prove it for yourself. The word of God, you're able to prove the word of God by changing your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you are nothing, brother, you'll be nothing. If you think you are something, you'll be something. What did God tell Abraham? He says, lift up your eyes as far as your eyes can see. To the north, to the east, to the west, to the, to the south. Whatever you see, I have given unto you. What are you seeing as a child of God? How, what happens to your imagination? What, are, what do you think about when you're alone? What do you see? Do you see yourself as someone who is not going to make it in life? Someone who is just going to die of a particular sickness that is, is wrong. You know, something is wrong with your body. You, you see yourself dying. How you see is your experience. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Out of your heart are the issues. And your heart is for the purpose of imagination. That's what your heart is for. Your heart is the center of your life. Your heart is the junction between your spirit and your soul. That's where the thoughts and the intents of a man's life comes out of. That's where your, your life issues. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So he says, transform your mind. Transform your mind, your mind with the word of God. Start thinking differently. Start thinking the way God has said about you. What has God said concerning you? 
I'm a child of God. You may say it once, twice, and it doesn't really mean much. It's as though it's a cliche. It's as though it's just something that we are saying. But the more you say it, the more it becomes real to you. The more you say it, the more it really becomes to you. I'm a child of God. I'm born of God. I'm born of His word. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. You know, sometimes when you start it off like that, you don't feel much. You don't feel anything. But just keep going. Just keep going like that. Speak in tongues and say something. Speak in tongues and say something that you are. You see that you start boiling from within. You start bubbling from within. Your confidence level just start rising. If you were if you were low like this, as you talk like that, you you you, you keep going up and up and up and up and up and up like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will never fail in my life. Success is mine. Success. To the glory of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My life will bring glory to God. Glory. Yeah. He says that I'm his glory. Yeah. I'm his glory. Yeah. I'm his beauty on earth. I'm his excellence on earth. I'm his perfection on earth. Wow. That's a, let, let's, let's read it. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter 2 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What a blessing. Let's read the Amplified of this. But you are a chosen race. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. It says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people. I'm purchased. Nobody buys nothing. Do you go to the shop to pay a thousand dollars for nothing and buy the rubbish? Some people do buy rubbish now, <laughs> but you, you pay thousand dollars for nothing. When they, when they ask you, what do you want in exchange? Oh, nothing. You don't do that. No, you don't do that. When you give money, you give money for something. When you purchase something, you purchase something of value. Something of value. Brother, you are of value. You are of value. Equivalent value of what was used to buy you. Guess what? You were bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are, worth, you are worth as much as the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not ordinary. Brother, start thinking differently. Okay? Start thinking differently. This is what, this is what differentiates between those who are winning and having results from those who are not. From Christians who are sick, you know, from those who are well and living in constant health. <laughs> One man of God had uh, an experience with cancer. I think it was prostate cancer or something like that. One of these cancers. And when he was told that he had this cancer, do you know what he did? He started talking the word of God for himself. He started saying what God has said in his word for himself. I'm a child of God. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. No cancer can be accommodated in the same temple as the Holy Spirit. Brother, he, he confessed the word for himself so much. He would speak in tongues and confess the word. Speak in tongues and confess the word. Concern, not just anything. Speaking concerning what, he, what God has made him. It's called homologia. Saying the same thing in consent with God. Because as far as God is concerned, God has said some things concerning you. God has said what he's supposed to say concerning you. Now you have to take what God has said and declare it for yourself. The Bible says he has said so that we may boldly say. God says things in his word so that we may boldly say. He's showing you what to do with the word of God. He started confessing it for himself. I'm a child of God. I'm a, this particular thing I'm telling you, this same thing I'm telling you. I'm a child of God. I will never die out of a cancer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, no disease heart out of hell can touch me. I was not born with this and I will not die with this. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He said that for himself. Can you imagine that when the next time they went to check, it took some months. The next time they checked, they saw Jesus' face on the cancer. Actually, the, the cancer had been cut off. It was gone. And they saw a face like that of Jesus. Someone who had some tones around his head and the face over there like that. That was what they saw. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about some, something that happened recently. I'm talking about Creflo Dollar. You can find out. You can check for yourself. Yeah. Not long ago. Just some few years ago. Months even. Yeah. So if you are going to joke with The Bible says that the word of God that we are speaking is quick. Ephesians, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. 
Hebrews 4.12. Then we'll come back to this. First Peter 2.9. It says, for the word of God is quick. Let's read the Amplified. No matter the Amplified tells you, it amplifies what is, is happening. You get it? For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. For the word that God speaks is alive, kola hadalabashi, and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow, of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The word of God is sharp. It's sharper than any two. It's sharper than any surgery, any surgical sword, any surgical knife you can have. Hallelujah. It can cut unnecessary things out of your body. It can cut unnecessary things out of your flesh, out of your life. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'll never fail in my life. I'll never fail in my life. The word works. The word of God works. The word works. And what it says about me is true. I will accept the testimony of God concerning my life. Remember, he says that if you accept the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. If you accept the testimony of men concerning you, someone can tell you that your head is too big. Your mouth is too big. You are not beautiful. And then you believe it. With all of your heart, it changes the way you walk. It changes the way you talk. It changes the way you think. It changes so many things about you because someone said something about you. And you're taking it as World Cup, as Champions League. <laughs> and it matters so much to you. What about what God has said? How about what God has said? What has God said concerning you? Do you know what God has said? Find out, brother. Find out through the word. Awaken to the fatherhood of God. Let God be true and all men liars, including yourself and your circumstance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will never fail in my life. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. As he is, so am I in this world. Listen, the way to go up is by believing in God's word and confessing it for yourself. Yeah. Believe it, confess it. Look at it, confess it for yourself. We are having the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. If you believe, you speak. Hallelujah. I'll never go down in my life. Success is mine. Everything I touch turns to gold. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Amplified, remember. We're reading it. It says, but you were chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people. I'm special. I'm special. Says, uh, he did that so that you may set for the wonderful deeds. You and I may set for the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are set to display the wonderful deeds. Set for the wonderful deeds. Do you understand deeds? Deeds is doings. We are the ones sent on earth to do what God does. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Doing good. I do good. I'm a good doer. I'm a doer of good. Hallelujah. <laughs> he went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. For this purpose was a son of man manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? Sickness, disease, poverty. He says, you have been sent by God. That's in 1 John 3, 8. Let's read it. 1 John 3, 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this, the, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The word destroy is to unemploy. That's what it means. It means to unemploy. God has set you forth into this world to unemploy the devil in your life, in your personal life. What is the employment of the devil in your life? To bring you into poverty. To bring you into sickness, to bring you into failure, to bring you into shame, to bring you into stupidity, to bring you into foolishness. That's the devil's plan and his work. That is what he's trying to do in your life. He says that God has said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Are you also the Son of God? Yeah. He says, for this purpose, you are also manifested, that you might destroy the works of the devil. 
what are you going to do about those? Are you going to allow the devil to have a field day in your life? Not when it comes to me. There are Christians who the devil have a field day in their lives. Obviously, he comes in to deceive them and that's whatever he wants to do with them and goes scot free. Look at Romans, Romans chapter 8. Let's read from verse 29. I wanted to mention that second point. I don't know if we have much time to mention the second point because that is also a whole world. Maybe I'll start it today and then we'll continue on Sunday. He says, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. No, jump all the way. Let's go to uh, 31 so that we don't read too much. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, who can be? He's asking a question. If God be for us, is God for you? Yes. Are you sure God is for you? Yes. Do you know that God is for you? Yes. <laughs> if God be for us, who? Who can be against us? What can be against us? No plague, no disease, no sickness, no poverty, no shame, no depression can be against Who can be against us? What is it that you can, you can array against a child of God? No, he says that what, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, it's God for you. Yeah. You must know that you 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 know that God is for you. God is for you. God is working on your behalf. God is working for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32. Then it says, he that spared not his own son, Jesus Christ. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How? How come you are afraid of asking? How come you are afraid of doing what you are supposed to do? He says, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? One man of God was told by God. Debrate me through your thinking. Like he was, he had bound God. He had boxed God with his thinking. You are thinking too small. God told me, God told him, listen, unbound me, let, release me <laughs> to work in your life by thinking big. What do you think when you, when you, when you look at yourself? How do you think when you look at yourself? What, what are your considerations? Oh, if we could have one, two cars, one for myself, one for my wife. Why don't you think about buying cars for others? Why? Why don't you think about being a blessing to others? That's what we've been sent for. That is a good work we've been sent for. Be a blessing to others. I don't know if you've noticed, Rich, these days when you go to YouTube or Facebook, they, have, they are trying to um, raise funds for things. COVID-19, it shows you, it shows you that you have to be very big to be able to give to the world. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. It shows you that all these big organizations need help. All of them need help. They need financial help. So if you are going to be looking up to them, one of these countries had their president saying that they need, he needed a certain amount of money. He, you know, the president came out to say that they've, they've raised a billion, a billion dollars as being used to you know, get things done for their country with respect to this sickness and disease and all of that. And in reality, but in reality, there was nothing like, there was no money like that. They didn't have that money. You know, and when I heard the money, when I heard the amount, I was surprised. I was like, man, I have to be big. A whole country can't find this. You have to be big. You have to be big. Do you understand? God has created you to be big. He says, multiply, replenish the earth, dominate. That's what he wants. That, he, that is what he wants from you. Dominate. It doesn't matter where you are born, whether you are born in a, in a home of a papa or whatever, makes no difference. Makes no difference. In Christ, we all have a level playing fr- uh, field. It's up to you now. It's in Christ that there's neither male nor female, bond nor free, rich or poor. We are all the same. What are we going to do? What are you going to do with the word? Wow. wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? All things. All things are mine. Say it again. Once, say it once again. All things are mine. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have his genes. Christ is in us. You know, Christ in man is a mystery hidden in all ages. 
This is what was hidden from all ages. And it has happened in reality in our lives. Practically. But because a lot of Christians don't consider it as something that is, is powerful enough, it doesn't show up in their lives. That's what I keep saying to you. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Okay? Make up your mind. That I'm going to enjoy the life of God. Christ in me will not be there for nothing. Because this is what God died for. Jesus died for this so that he can be in you. What does it mean now that he's in you? What does it mean now? Did he do it for nothing? Who, who, who dies for nothing? Died for something. What does it mean now? Get serious with God's word, basically. Get, like, decide for yourself that Christ's death will mean nothing, will not mean, it will not be a waste in my life. It will be useful in my life. My life will be a demonstration of the fact that Christ died for someone who was worth, worthy of his blood by living the life he has given to you to live. Look at Colossians 1.25. Let me just stay on point one and then we'll close. Okay, I'm going to give you some announcements in some few minutes. So, um, which is also going to take some time. So I want to end quickly so that we, go, we can go ahead to the announcements and then we'll move on from there. In Jesus' name. Is this, whereof, this is Paul talking. He says, Whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Oh, I'll let you from verse 23 so that we try and it makes more sense. Okay, so 21 is good. Let's read Colossians 1 21. It says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. You know, reconciliation. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. Next verse, verse 22. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Verse 23. And he says, If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Verse 25, I don't know if you can follow what we are saying. Then it says, whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The word fulfill there is to complete the word of God. That's a whole teaching I tell you. It says, to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. And it says, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to who? To his saints. He says, it's made it manifest to all his saints. All his saints. The mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations. Ages and generations. In other words, this is something everybody was looking out for. But it was hidden to them. It was not given to them to enjoy Yet those who have, who have it are not minding it now. They are not appreciating it now. It says, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and gener from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Verse 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is, he's showing you what the mystery is. Which is Christ in you. That mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of beauty. It's Christ in you. It says this is the mission that was hidden in ages past and from generations past. Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is inside me. Christ, the anointed one, with his anointing is inside me. Is this worthy of your attention? Is this fact worthy of your attention? Because for many, for many Christians, for many children of God, the Nigerian movie is more is worthy of their attention than this. That car, that house, 
whatever it is that you're doing, is more worthy of attention than this. Is this good enough treasure for you? Jesus Christ is the embodiment of all wisdom and all knowledge. He says, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I mean, everything you can ever think about is in Christ. This is worthy of your attention, brother. It's worthy of your attention. This is the hope. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The hope of glory. The hope of beauty. The hope of excellence. The hope of joy. Unspeakable that is full of glory. The hope of greatness. Power. The hope of glory. So focusing on Christ in you is what will lead you to all kinds of glory. It's what will lead you to all kinds of power. It's what will lead you to all kinds of praise. Hallelujah. I will never fail in my life. I'll never fail in my life. Not when Christ is in me. A lot of Christians who are failing, even though Christ is in them, because they've not bothered to pay attention to it. Pay attention to who Christ is. Who is this Christ in me? Who is this Christ in me? Is Christ really in me? Is Christ really in me? If he is, who is he? What is he, what is he in my life? What is he? It must mean something. It must mean something. It must mean something. Look at First Peter chapter 1. Let me show you this. I have so many things to show you. But I'll just show you as time could permit us this evening. Let's read from verse 9. First Peter 1, 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Then it says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. The prophets of old inquired and searched diligently concerning our salvation and what will happen to us. They searched diligently, yet it was hidden from them. And prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Next verse, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified before, beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Has Christ suffered? Yeah. Has Christ come to suffer? Yeah. He says that there's a glory that follows after Christ has suffered. And that glory is in you, in Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mission that was hid from ages past, but is now revealed. So if you pay attention to it, you see it. It will be revealed to you. You will see the power in this particular revelation of God. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. I will never fail. God is now my father. Hola bashatala. Eloho dalabai. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Hola. Just speak in tongues wherever you are. Give him glory. Give him praise. Kola bashata namani. Me doho dalabala. Me do loho shalababa. Man doho zeke sete. Me loho shalababaye. Nando lo bolo. I will never fail in my life. Success is mine. Every single day of my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pay attention to Christ in me. I pay attention to Christ in me. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. I'll never go down. Christ is in me. I'll only go up. Higher and higher. Upwards and forwards only is my direction in life. I keep going higher and upwards only. Do you know what? This is what will help you rise. What I'm sharing with you now is what will help you rise and succeed no matter what is going on in this world, whether it's COVID-19 problem or uh, financial issues, economic crisis, it makes no difference. We are different. We are exempted. Why? Because we are of a different class. It's my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to what is happening around you, but according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He says, but ye are come unto Mount Zion. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion. That is where we have come to. We have arrived in Mount Zion. 
Should, let's show it, show it to me. But you are come unto Mount Zion and, to, and unto the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem and to an, an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant of the, the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. We are under the blood of Christ that sprinkles continuously and that speaks better things. The blood of Christ speaks mercy. It speaks love. It speaks goodness. It, it speaks grace. It speaks glory. It speaks, it speaks prosperity. It speaks health. And that's where we are. That's where we have come to. It's but you have come unto Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the revelation that was hidden. Hidden. Let me show you another one. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. It's a long read, but I think you'll be interested. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me towards you. Next verse. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Paul had his own knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He had his own knowledge concerning Christ. That was why he had the results he had. That is why serpents will, will, will fasten their teeth on his hands and he would just shake them off into a, shake it off into a, into a fire. The Bible says that the whole of the island was watching. Everybody was watching to see him swell up and die. They said initially when they saw the, the, the serpent hanging on his hand that this guy is cursed. There's something wrong with him. The sea wanted to kill him. He didn't die. And, and when he escaped the sea and came on the shore, a serpent as a viper, the Bible says a venomous viper fastened itself on Paul's hand. And they were watching to see him swell up and die. After some time, they were watching. After one hour, they were watching. He was not dying. Two hours, he was not dying. Three hours, he was not dying. The guy was moving around, eating, drinking, doing everything, enjoying. Then they changed their testimony concerning him. They said that this man must be a God. This man must be a God. Brother, we are gods in this earth, I tell you. And the fact that you have a challenge with what I just said is a problem. That's, the pro that's what the problem is. When I just, I just said we are gods in this earth, and you have a problem with that. How come you have a problem with that? Because you've not read your Bible. We are not ordinary, to be honest with you. We are not. They are not. They changed their testimony and said, this guy is a God. He must be a God. He must be a God. He must be a God. What kills others do not kill us. He says, they shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm them. It shall not kill them. It shall not harm them. Nothing bad can happen to them. Why? Because I am in them. Christ is in them. This is whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Next verse. These are powerful things. Then says, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach unto the Gentiles, that I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. Christ in you is riches that cannot be searched out. It's power that cannot be searched out. Christ in you. It says, Paul says that I was sent, I was made a preacher, that I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Let's read the Amplified. To me, though I'm the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, favor, privilege was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles their unending, boundless, fathomless. Was he lying or is what he was telling them? Do you think this is a lie? Is this a lie? I don't think it's a lie. He says, I was sent to talk to the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles the unsearchable, unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. Then it says, wealth which no human being could have searched out. Wealth which no human being could have searched out. Brother, all of that is tabernacled in you. 
all things that you'll ever need in your life is inside. It's inside your, your life. It's inside your spirit right now. It's in Christ in you. It's in Christ in you. Give it attention. Awaken. That's what it means to awaken the fatherhood of God. Give attention. He says, my son, give me your heart. Then he says, let your eyes observe my ways. See, don't, be, don't be distracted by so many things around. Today we are going here, tomorrow we are going here. Tomorrow. I, I, I'm too young for these things. I'm too old for these things. The old people say I'm too old for these things. The young people say I'm too young for these things. When are you going to be okay for these things? When? Wealth which no man could have searched out. Wealth which no man could have searched out. Unfathomable, fathomless, boundless, unending, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. Wealth which no human being could have searched out. He's talking about, he's explaining Christ in you. The treasures that are in Christ in you. So pay attention to it, okay? Pay attention to it. Awaken to that. That's what I meant when I said awaken to the Father of God. Don't let Christ's first coming mean nothing in your life. He came to give you a higher life. Don't live a low life. Don't live a life that makes no difference. He says that we are the light of the world. A light that is what? A city that is set on a hill. Which cannot be hid. Which cannot be hidden. Matthew chapter 5. Show it to us please. Matthew 5, 15. No, 14. He says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Your life is not supposed to be hidden. Obscure. Like, there's nothing impressive about your life. You are sick like every other person. You are broke like every other person. You are depressed like every other person. The economy affects you like every other person. You are in debt like every other person. That is not the life that he called us to live. Please, there's, there's no place in the Bible where it's like that. Listen. You know, even in prison, Paul was a big man. Let me show it to you. Acts chapter 24, verse 24. Acts 24, 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of Christ, the faith in Christ. You know, Paul was in prison at this time, you know. And Felix was uh, the governor, called for him. Next verse, verse 25. And as he reasoned of, the, of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to God, a judgment to come, sorry, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He became afraid when he started talking about judgment. So he says, It's something you need to preach. Next verse. He hoped also, Felix hoped also, that money should have been given him of Paul that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. So Felix was hoping to get money from Paul. The guy was in prison. What was Felix? Felix was governor, remember? What, was, what, what would a governor be looking for from a prisoner? Message, from which, from which verse? 26. From verse 26, message. After the same time, he was secretly hoping that Paul would offer him a substantial bribe. Substantial bribe. You can't, governor, you can't keep a, give a, a governor $100 to be taken out of prison. He was expecting a substantial bribe. <laughs> Brother, refuse to be poor. I refuse, I refuse to be poor. poor. Refuse to be sick. Refuse to be defeated in life. Yeah. That's why you should practice shutting your door every now and then. And then you start speaking to yourself. Start speaking to yourself. You pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Speak to yourself. Say what God has said concerning you. Let the devil know that you are not going to give up that knowledge for, for, for nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'll never be broke in my life. Go back to Ephesians chapter, chapter, chapter 3. Let me finish. We're in verse 8 now, isn't it? We just read verse 8. 
unto me who am less than the least of all saints, this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles and the riches of Christ. Next, next verse, verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, of the mystery, the fellowship, the sharing, the participation in of this particular mystery, which is Christ in you, like the productivity of that, how, what to do to bring that knowledge, that mystery, to an experiential level. He says, I'll send to do that, to make all men see what's the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. That's why I'm talking to you like this. I'm showing you how to bring it out. How to let it show, how to participate in that particular knowledge so that you can have results. You see, remind yourself, never forget who you are. Never forget what God has made you. Never forget the fact that Christ is in you. For, never forget the fact that God has not been made your father. Don't forget it. Say it to yourself continuously. Say it as many times. Even if you have to spend two years to say it continuously and read it continuously for it to become stable, for your mind to be fixed on it in a certain way. Do it. It's worth it. You'll be surprised that those years of investment or those months of investment will change a lot of things about your life. It will change so many things about your life. Hallelujah. And to make all men see what is the mystery, what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Next verse, verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers, unto the angels, unto the devils that are hanging up there, unto all every form of principality and power in heavenly places might be known by the church. He wants you to prove. God wants to use us to prove to them. Okay? His wisdom, his manifold wisdom. He wants us to demonstrate the manifold wisdom of God. To all principalities and powers. For them, for you to paint them. All these principalities and powers in heavenly places. This is specific. In heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's talking about the ones that we've been we've spoken about with respect to believers authority and all of those things. There are principalities and powers hanging in heavenly places. He wants them to know. The manifold wisdom of God by us. Verse 11. According to the eternal purpose. Put your purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is his eternal purpose. This is the eternal purpose of God. That you and I would demonstrate his goodness. Demonstrate his power. Demonstrate his glory. Demonstrate his character. Demonstrate his deeds. Demonstrate his light. Demonstrate his virtues here on earth. Show forth his manifold wisdom. Brother, if you won't do it, I will do it. I know you are going to do it. I know you are going to focus on God's word. This is what to do major thing to do with his first coming because it is the purpose that he has purpose eternally in Christ Jesus our Lord for you and I. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands wherever you are and just thank him for what I shared with you. Give him glory. Don't go offline. Stay on. We have some announcements for you. Give him glory and give him praise. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful, Lord. Christ is in me. Christ is in us. Christ is in us. Oh, hallelujah. Success is ours on every side. I pray for you right now. I pray for grace for you. I release grace upon your life. Grace to focus. Grace to focus. Grace to not be distracted from what is most important in your life. I, I, I pray for grace for you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. To focus on Christ in you. To focus on the fatherhood of God in your life. To focus on your rights in Christ. To focus on what God has made you in Christ Jesus. Receive grace right now, wherever you are. Wherever you are, receive grace. Receive grace. Grace. To not forget grace to pay attention to the glory of God in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive grace right now. Father, thank you for a release of grace to everyone watching us, to your glory. Thank you for fruitfulness. Like I said to the people of Antioch, we also be called Christians because we are just like Christ. As he is, so are we now in this world. Thank you, Father. Thank you. That we walk in the footsteps of Christ demonstrating your character 
your divine life here on earth. Even in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to give a good offering. We'll come back after the offering. Then I'll, sh- I'll share with you the announcement. If you notice, I finished the message earlier, early today, because I want to spend some small time sharing with you a few things concerning what the measures we are taking um, to bring us back to church and everything. So don't go off. We'll be back in some few minutes. Just take up your offering wherever you are. We are still receiving your offerings, your fights, your partnership. Don't um, refrain from sending it. Send it in. It's helping us. It's doing a lot. It's getting us to get so many things done. This house is still under construction. We need more money to build. We are buying more lands and doing all kinds of things. Just yesterday, I paid for uh, I paid some amount for one of the one of the lands that we are paying for, and we are just going forward. So make sure you're sending it in. Don't don't refrain your hands. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the morning sow your seed. In the evening withhold not thy hands. So don't withhold your hands. Send in that offering. Send in that fight. Send in that seed. Send in that partnership. Some of you have not sent your partnership for forever. <laughs> send in your partnership. God will bless you. Father, thank you for giving to us to give. Thank you for giving us for giving our fights, our offerings, our partnership. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together. Running over you cause men to add on to our bosoms. Thank you that these seeds are going from us, but they are bringing so much harvest to us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blessings in our lives. Thank you that as men are saying there's a casting down, who will say there's a lifting up for us because of what you have taught us to engage ourselves in. We give you glory, give you praise for fruitfulness on every side of our lives. Even in Jesus' name. Amen. Give that offering. I'll be back in some few minutes. God bless you. your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so kind 
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. So all you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. So all you won't kick down, now you won't tear down, coming after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome back from that wonderful offering time. Well, in, in Ghana, um, our president has, you know, given us the opportunity to have services um, once again. And um, with so many rules and so many regulations, which are very important. You know, don't be like um, every other person. Be a child of God. And let your responses be the responses of the word of God. You know, when the president spoke, some people started talking, hey, 100 is too small, one hour is too small, this one. We are aware. But then this is what, per the prevailing circumstances, this is what we've been given. So we have to be appreciative of what God has given to us through the president and utilize it for ourselves rather than complain. Don't join. Always make sure you don't join the complaining bunch. Always join the bunch that are ready to think for ideas as to how to make things work. Do you see? Because if you read in your Bible, in Romans chapter 13 from verse 1, so this is, this is an announcement for those of us who are in Ghana. Those who are abroad, um, we know some places have had churches opening and all. In America, for instance, the American president says churches are an essential service, so he's opened up churches, which is very powerful. Hallelujah. So in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 5, I want to say some things, but before I go on, I want to show you some scriptures. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. I hope you understand that. Verse 2. Whoso therefore, whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bared not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God. Can you imagine? He is a minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Verse 5. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject 
not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Also for conscience sake. So there are things that have been said by the president and um, we want to follow what we are supposed to follow. Okay? We want to follow what we are supposed to Go to First Peter chapter 2 from verse 13 to verse 17. First Peter 2, 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. For the Lord's sake. Whether it be to the king as supreme. We don't have kings. We have presidents, right? Or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Verse 17. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Message. Go to message verse, from verse what? 13. Make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities, whatever their level. They are God's emissaries for keeping order. It is God's will that by doing good, you might cure the ignorance of the fools who think you are a danger to society. Wow. Exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. Love your spiritual family. Revere God. Respect the government. Respect the government. So on the basis of what the word of God has said, we are going to give some instructions for all of us to follow so that we can... Um, go the way. Don't say, well, uh, the markets are open. We know the markets are open. We know that the markets, people are not keeping to certain standards. But you are not in the market. You are in the house of God. And because you are in the house of God, you must do what God wants you to do. Because everybody is watching. To see what you will do. So that they can say what they've been wanting to say all this while. Don't give them the opportunity. Okay? So, um, in view of these things, we are going to be um, having Sunday services, but not this Sunday, 7th June. On 7th June, that's a Sunday. We're not going to have any Sunday service for any of our churches. Um, there'll be a leader's service at 3 p.m., strictly for leaders. And uh, we're going to keep to all the rules um, as we're supposed to. I'll lay them down in some few minutes. So that's what we're going to do. On Sunday, we're going to have an online service like we've been doing all this while since the... Uh, ban on public gatherings began through the lockdown till, till this time. So this Sunday we are going to continue. I'm going to continue sharing what I've been sharing with you concerning what to do with the first coming and uh, we're going to be online. So Sunday we are going to be online. Next Wednesday we are going to be online. Then the next Sunday, which is on 14 June, we'll open up our churches for um, regular services. And like I said, I'm going to give you um, a rundown some procedures that will be following. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, um, our Wednesday services are going to be strictly online. The online church services is going to continue, but it will be on Wednesdays after um, the 14th of June. When every Wednesday night, we're going to have an online service together with all of our church members and all those who have enjoyed, our friends who have been joining us online. So our online Wednesday service is going to continue. I'll be preaching to you on Wednesdays on Wednesday evening, so we didn't have church services. We want to reduce the contact with the church building um, to Sundays, not not add Wednesdays for now, until um, the tensions reduce and the fear and all of that go away, so that we can continue business as usual. But for now, we are going to be on. We are going to be online throughout June, throughout the month of June, throughout the month of July, even possibly into August, when um, depending on what's going on, we are still going to let you know how things are going to go. Hallelujah. So be excited because we are going to be online. We are still going to be enjoying the word this, in this form, in this fashion. Hallelujah. But then on Saturday, starting from um, 14 June in Ghana, for churches in Ghana, all those of you who are close to any of our branches, you are admonished to be in church. Okay? We want you to be in church. On Sunday, I'm going to say some things that will help you, help your mind to be in church. So we are going to be in church on 14 June, then on... Uh, 
um, 20, 21st, I think, 21st June, then on 28th June, we are going to be in church throughout. Okay? So, what is happening is that our Sunday services will be held with 100 people, like the government has said, within an hour. And it's going to start at, uh, I wrote 8.30 here, but I want us to start at 9 o'clock instead. So, 9 to, um, to 10. And the second one will start from 10 um, 45 to 11 45 the next one will start from 12 30 to 1 30 depending on the 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 size of the church the number of people in the church if the church is a church that is under a hundred just one meeting will suffice if the church is under a hundred and the auditorium is not big enough to have you separate yourself uh, with respect to the social distancing of one meter, that is three feet that has been given, then you have to divide your your service into into a two service as well. So you can do the first one from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., okay, and then from 10.45 to 11.45 a.m. Hallelujah. We want to have 45 minutes break between services so that we can clean the surfaces and do all the things we are supposed to do before we allow you to come in. We, are, we allow the second service to come in and then a third service and a fourth service, depending on your number. Some of us will have to do four services. So we're going, to, we're going to get it done anyways. Hallelujah. I don't know if you like what I'm sharing with you. So please make sure that you are in one of the services. Your pastor, if you, have, uh, if you are in an MC or a company, your company head or your company pastor will give you the specific time that you expected to be in church. We are going to be doing, we're going to be doing it according to our MCs and companies. So whoever brought you to church... Contact whoever brought you to church or whoever asked you to join online. If you want to join us in a fiscal church during this period, we're going to be enjoying um, messages from our branch pastors like we've been doing all these years. So we want to experience the togetherness once again, the joy of being together, the joy of praying together, the excitement and the glory that we have being together. Jesus said that wherever two or three of you are gathered together in my name. So gathering is very important to God. I'm going to talk about it on Sunday, okay? So we want to have that on Sunday mornings uh, from 14th June onwards. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when you go to church, you see uh, a bucket, a Veronica bucket, that's how they call it in Ghana, a bucket with a tap with an antiseptic soap and then a tissue, tissue paper. You just wash your hands like you're supposed to do. You take some of the tissue paper, you clean your hands, and then you enter the service. The ushers will direct you and show you what to do. Hallelujah. Don't touch doors. Don't touch any of those things. Just um, the ushers will do that. They open the doors for you so that you can enter, so that you can be safe. Okay? Not all men have faith. We have faith, but not all men have faith. So let's do all things to the glory of God. Hallelujah. There will be a registration at the entrance of all our churches uh, for every service. So when you come in, there will be someone sitting at the entrance who will be taking an attendance. Take your name, your number. Uh, your location and all of that, so that um, we can have a record of who attended which service, just in case there's a challenge somewhere, we'll be able to pick, handpick um, the person out and help that group. That um, Nothing like that is going to happen, but just for precaution's sake. We have doctors amongst us, and um, we have to do the right thing. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll also be practicing wearing of nose masks in church. <laughs> so you come in with your nose mask. Hallelujah. No mask, no, no service. If you get there and you don't have a mask, we'll see what we can do for you. But make sure you come along with your mask. Okay? Put it on and come in. Um, I understand there are some things about it. When you come to the church location, we'll show you what to do. But when you come, when you're coming in, put on your nose mask and then come in. We'll show you when you enter the service. As to how things are going to be. Hallelujah. Then, no hugging. Social distancing. No hugging in love economy church. It's practically, it's, it's practically impractical. <laughs> impractical, but we have to do it. Because it's just for a period. It's not forever. It's just for a period. Because of um, all the things that are happening. Um, no hugging. But elbow, elbow greetings are allowed. So you can just give someone an elbow like that. Okay. And then you keep your social distancing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Then, um, 
You are encouraged to give your offerings and thanks online, like we've been doing all this well, even on a Sunday morning. We want to go for service. Everything will be done within an hour to be a beautiful service. Then you give your offering online through Momo, through, uh, through Mobile Money, through Flutterwave, through Vodafone Cash, through um, World Remits, every all the things that we have online so far. You give through. If your, your money is with you physically, there will be physical offering bowls. They will not be passing the offering baskets like we've been doing because people will be touching it. So we'll put it at the, at the, at the front of the altar. There will be a short time for offering, offering time. And then you walk up and then put it in there. Elshers will show you what to do during that time. Hallelujah. Then there will be a special meeting for branch pastors and ushers on this, how to disinfect your, your auditorium and uh, sanitization and all of those things. How to clean your chairs, your pulpit, etc. Very soon. We'll give you an announcement concerning that very, very soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in a nutshell, these are the things that we've uh, put in place to help us have a glorious time together. I can't wait to see some of you. I can't wait to be in church with you. And uh, don't be afraid. Come, let's enjoy ourselves. I know you are not afraid. In love economy, but you are not afraid of anything because of what you've heard. But we'll take precautions like I've showed you. As you come to church, your pastor will show you some more um, things that have been laid down to help to keep everybody safe during this time. If you have a very high temperature, it's not advisable to come to church. If your temperature is very high, just if you realize you're not feeling well, just stay at home. Don't come into the church service. We'll pray for you to get healed, and then you can come the next Sunday. Hallelujah. So you can keep every other person safe, okay? So basically, this is what we are going to be doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you've been blessed. Yeah. I hope you've learned something. Yeah. Great. So on Sunday, 7th June, we are going to continue online. Then on Wednesday, we're going to continue online. And then the next Sunday, that's on 14 June, we're going to have physical church services. I will not be online. Only those who are um, our online members who are not close to a physical church will be allowed to join us online, to join me online um, during the Sunday morning service. And then our diaspora, our church in the diaspora, we have so many people outside of Ghana who are watching us. Our churches in UK, our churches in Canada, and our churches, uh, our people in China, Finland, Israel, Japan, all those people can join us online. We, know we have your email addresses and all of that. So a special link will be sent to you for you to be able to join online. You may not see it on YouTube when you go. You will not see it on my page on the YouTube channel when you go. You will not see the Sunday morning service um, going, like, going live for everybody to see. It will be for only those who are truly online and are not close to any of our physical churches. If you've been joining us online on this while you're close to a physical church, we would want you to be in the physical church. So on Sunday morning, we're going to show you a, a, a list of all our physical churches in Ghana so that you can find a number, call the number, and be part of that physical church service in Jesus' name. And I know you are going to be blessed. We want you to be part of us proper, proper. I think it's a good idea, isn't it? So that's, that's it to the glory of God. God bless you so much for joining us online once again. See you on Sunday for another blast with God and his word. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And so that's now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Surely, goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. As we do in the presence of the Lord. Even as his presence draws within us. And we live. And we walk. And we fellowship. And I'm filled with the spirit. I love you very much. See you again on Sunday morning. God bless you. Bye bye. Yes, we are wondering how we gonna make it all the mind the No fears, that will be all you go need. Things on the rise, people know go back, but you gotta keep it swat set. The world is all you gotta lose, you gotta know the great ones within. Gonna show you all the ways to find the wind that's all within. Yeah. You know the fear, nothing. Success, you day for the calling. You gon' make it big, no be lying, no be smarting. Tell me to me, won't be up, forget to run to. You know the fear, nothing. Success, you day for the calling. You gon' make it big, no be lying, no be smarting. Tell me to me, won't be up, forget to run to. Recipe, your recipe. Study that recipe, your recipe. Ain't wide open, no recipe. For the success, give me your recipe. We on that recipe, your recipe. Tell me that recipe, your recipe. Hands wide open, your recipe. For the success, give me your recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
all like a crap, and Jack a crap, no be the mindset. We ain't tryna do this for the fame or the masses. He said, you just gotta point him to the NASA. We know for a to come a flash in the wrong scene. Action, take us on the tracks though. Tell him what you need and keep it basic like the master. Give him better vision like they see it in the farm road. John Doe, they can live again without a Marsco. Eight bars filling your bow, the soul in it. And God's word, the textbook to go fishing. Same word telling you how to go in it. High greatness, so you need is all you ain't gotta lose. You gotta know the greater ones within. He gon' show you all the ways to find the wind that's all within. You know they fear nothing. Success, you there for the calling. You gon' make it big, no be lying, no be smarting. Tell me to me, won't be out, forget to You know they fear nothing. Success, you there for the calling. You gon' make it big, no be lying, no be smarting. Tell me to me, won't be out, forget to launch it. Rest your recipe. Study that recipe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got all the hits, boy. Charlie, make a good church. It's my job. Oh, young cop. My story on the path. My child, my papa. We don't cope on me that was a set and then so watch me so I am my papa. My room in him. Me to treat me sing. Me to reach out to the fair fair fair. Me to coach and I cope on you so I am Sunday morning. Charlie, me that. Be a blessing. Try to see if you had my age, my pain. No, I'm in time and I'm come sign it. Yeah, sorry if you say, Yes, my sorry. Me and me and my baby, I'm a me intimidate me. Cause I say, Hey, hey, every day of the week, we the work, work. We the play to the peak. If you like, check. As for me, I the see the things I the search. So my body, come with me. Can you make a good church? Charlie, me could go church. Charlie, me could go church. Hey, Charlie, me could go church. Charlie, me could go church. I'm money chasing on a Monday. Gang and banging on a Tuesday. Woman crushing on a Wednesday. Fast forward, thank God it's Friday. Hey, I'll be busy, busy all week. Sick of some money and since I did see. But then I can say, if I put God first, then things I go get them on fleek. So I forget all my matter before. Nothing be hard for my papa at all. The thing if be small, I they suffer for more. He go do back, 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 and that be all. See, I'll be flexing my shirt and my new tie, yeah. The shadow, the papa, they look fly, yeah. The hand kiss be two, you the best why. I they go shaku shaku for the most high. Hey. Every day of the week. We the work, work, work. We the play to the peak. If you like, check. check. As for me, I the see the things I the search. Check. So my body, come with me. Charlie, me could go church. Hey, Charlie, me could go church. Quack. Charlie, me could go church. Hey, Charlie, me could go church. Quack. Charlie, me could go church. Charlie, me could go church. Why every time you don't want flex? How you just see your body? If you pay the beach, I leave for the G. I was blind, but now I see. Used to waste time, GMT. But these days, whether it be Sunday or holiday, Charlie, me there my mind day all day long. Got it, praise the Lord. I'm a king, scared of drop my Jesus song. Yeah, boy, make it while the sun shines. So today be my grand time. Woke up early, I did feel fine. Kiss will be the new wine. Every day of the week, we the work, work. We the play to the peak. If you like, check. As for me, I the see the things I the set. So my body, come with me. Tell me to go church. What is the purpose of God? Really, what was His plan for all this? But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He died so you could live with him as your best friend forever. Understanding this changes everything. It's something worth celebrating. See, we are the friends of God.
so rejoicing. I'm so divine, eh? I'm born again. This who they mommy, I know be ordinary. I'm seated above, yeah, that's who I am. I know say all things are working. I go be alright. I'm never lacking. All things they're all mine. All things are working. I go be alright. I'm never lacking. All things they're all mine. From the dust to the high table, anything God be capable. If you do for me, He go do for you. Then I tell you what dreams hold me, catch it and no, no say all things are working. I go be alright. I'm never lacking. All things they're all. 